two between future and 80s mole at upper right hand corner. This is on Eclipse, by the way. Upper right hand corner as the black Protoss, although it doesn't show with the beta shiny Nexus. This is future SC, bottom left hand corner. We have 80s mullet as the yellow Terran. This is going to be on Eclipse game one going to future, and that really did highlight his style. And that's actually why I re when I was coming back to Twitch and being able to spend a little bit more time for myself, Future was one of the first people I saw on Twitch doing Brood War stuff, aside from Artosis. And then I realized, oh wait, subscriptions are a thing. And, I, and then quickly that went to 80s Mullet. I really want to give a shout out to both these guys. Check out their Twitch channels. Oftentimes you'll be able to see them doing these show matches and be able to get the double view by watching both of their uh, feeds at the same time. Oftentimes they'll be King of the Hills running and they're just, yeah, they're fun guys. Future is really fun to watch, specifically because of his early game aggressive style and some of the amazing micro he's able to pull off in the early game. 80s Molt's just all around awesome dude. Chill chat and is honestly, I think everybody agrees, an up and coming Terran player in the Foreigner community. Just seems to be improving leaps and bounds. I think last year or the year before last, man, 2020, I tell you. So 2019, feels like 2019 was last year and 2020 was just kind of like this big vacuum, right? But anyway, 2019, he was, I believe, generally voted as like the most improved Foreigner player out there. Anyway, future putting down that gateway, you saw a hint of his style in game one. And that's what he does, is he he said it himself that he likes, uh, he, he seems to have the ability to oftentimes punch above his weight class or deliver above his something along those lines. Basically, he tends to beat opponents that are higher MMR. Oftentimes, because he forces his opponents into errors, he plays a very aggressive early game style and oftentimes can utilize really good micro, really well thought out, uh, honestly, a variety of not just cheese, but well thought out cheese. Because it's not just, oh, I, I dropped two gate and I'm just trying to force zealots up your front door. It's more, I'm going to pressure you early and try to get Dark Templar out there, something along those lines. Two probes and gas. We'll see if a third joins it. Looks like a third is making its way. Cybernetic score being dropped immediately. One zealot being produced. Barracks on the front door here for 80s mullet. And so it looks like we are not going to see that. We do see one zealot, but I don't know if we're going to see a lot of zealot pressure on this match, specifically because it is... So it is a two-player map. That's the other thing we have to keep into account. Last match is Future got the first scout out on 80s mullet, and that's an 80s ended up scouting Future last, which is a scary scenario to be in against Future. And that's the exact scenario where he can pull a lot of games. Looks like we're seeing some more of the same from 80s a bit, where he's getting that early factory down, try to deal with these zealots as quickly as possible. I like this kind of, I think this is an adjustment from his typical build. I think this is specifically want, what he wants to do against future. Zealot making his way across. Yeah, he wants to get that, that vulture down as quickly as possible to deal with that early zealot pressure because he knows his opponent in that regard and then get a command center to take a quick economic lead in the mid game. If I was going to say there's a weakness in Future's play, it's in the mid game. I feel like oftentimes he will try to play Gateway Man and stick a little bit too long on just pure Gateway units without mixing in any High Templar or anything along those lines. Zealot trying to, again, slow down this factory to make that early game Zealot pressure a little bit more effective. He does have a Dragoon making its way across the map. Might get a Marine kill right here. Yeah, and he's just really good at just baiting his opponent. That's the thing. If you give future an opportunity to get a marine kill, he will get a marine kill. And he's very good at baiting this sort of thing out. Another vulture being produced. Sorry, first vulture being produced. Another marine being produced. Dragoon is making its way across the map as well to provide some additional pressure. That SCV that was sitting to the back corner is going to try to sneak in and it looks like it's going to catch future dropping a nexus. So he's going to have the scouting information he's looking for. Dragoon moving up against three marines and the vulture, that zealot not sneaking down just yet to provide any additional defense. And now body blocking on that ramp. Command center still being built. And trying to use the high ground misfire chance location. Now the Zealot sneaking back down wants to try to get some SCV kills, allowing that shield to replenish. Vulture pulling off that front line. Marine still body blocking that front just so that Zealot can't sneak through. I don't think that Zealot got any SCV kills, but nice attempt by Future. And Future now having to settle back into the mid game. And here's the thing, despite all of that early game pressure and losing a Zealot and some Dragoons and whatnot, you can see that Nexus is immediately going up. So he's not in the worst economic position. That felt like a lot more pressure than just a early one gate build. That's the other problem, I would say, the other weakness oftentimes in Future's early game play is sometimes he will overextend. So honestly, with these two Dragoons, even though he probably should be backing off and playing a little bit more careful with what he's got, he just dives in, gets another Vulture kill, 
is working on these Marines. That bunker being canceled, again, just, yeah. Does a lot with a little. Again, good micro, picking off the Vulture as it was transferring across and forcing 80's mullet back into the defensive posture on the top of his ramp, which is going to slow down this natural expansion. Tank is about halfway finished. Now starting to meander back out, but there are three Dragoons right here, and another Marine getting picked off. Tank should be out shortly, which might interrupt this, but you can just see all of this early game damage that Future gets. One Dragoon down. Just plays very, very aggressively, and oftentimes ends up in bonus situations as a result. I think 80's Molt has gotten much better about not being flustered by the early game losses. Now Future has lost two Dragoons on the front. There is a Siege tank out, and this is where he needs to be a little bit more careful. <laughs> and this is what I would say is, oftentimes his strength is oftentimes his weakness as well. Sometimes he will overextend, be a little bit too aggressive on the front, end up losing a lot of his units, and be vulnerable to kind of counterattacks and things along those lines. Future, with only one Dragoon, one Dragoon there at home base, needs to be a little bit worried by Mullet gathering up a counterattack, honestly, with... Two siege tanks a, a little bit, although Mullet looks like he's going for more of uh, defensive play in the mid game. He hasn't pl he is plopping down a second factory, but now that his natural expansion is well established, future with two gateways just pumping dragoons does have robotics facility building shuttles already out. Reaver is on the way. Natural expansion looks fairly saturated. He is sitting at 28 probes that have been mining at two bases longer than 80s molts have been for quite some time. 80s mullet, if the game persists, should end up in a good economic position, assuming Future does not have to take a third base. Future loading up. We'll load up that Reaver and go for some Harass Observatory out. Comsat sweep, as well as a Vulture going out to go ahead and check whether that third is going up or not. And that just shows you the respect there and the flexibility of Future's early game. I really feel like, yeah, it's Future's early game play that makes him so dangerous, particularly in this matchup. Where he can go for that early game expand and go like, you know, Gateway Man and really get a death throttle in the match. He can hide a bunch of Dragoons in the back corner, pick off early Siege tanks, and really put Terran in pressure in the mid game. Zelt's being scooped up in that Reaver, so he's definitely going for Reaver Harass. The question is, is where does it land and how much damage does it do? Siege tech being upgraded. Machine Shop producing various Vultures. Vulture speed being upgraded as well, as well as mines. Am I missing a third factory someplace? Weapons 1 also on the way. Another command center being built, so it looks like... Sorry, that's shuttle speed being upgraded, not vulture speed. Looking in the upper, upper left-hand corner. Vultures meandering down do see that shuttle. I think they saw that shuttle. Here's the thing, it's black on black. So it is possible because of the darkness that AZ does not see it. Reaver's going to land. Siege tank... No, they saw it. Siege tank lands. Reaver's going to get one shot. SCV's not pulling out. I think that's going to be a Dud Scarab. Dud Scarab. Zelt on the low ground. Eating a lot of shot. One, one SCV down. Future's taken two SCVs down. And honestly, not a big win considering the large initial investment of the Shuttle Reaver. He's going to go ahead and take his 12 o'clock base. I believe in the meantime, yeah, Vultures snuck up to this front door and were killed by maybe this Dragoon? I think killed by that Dragoon. Fourth gateway plopping down. This tends to be what future favors. Reaver sneaking around that back edge. Siege tank's not in position. There is a turret there toward this Reaver back. And 80's mullet responding to it very quickly. Might have a little bit of gas disruption. But loses two SCVs. Is going to lose some mining time. And future's going to have to back out again. But here's the critical thing. He saw that third factory, or that third command center being built. Mines on the ramp. This Dragoon's not long for life. This is going to force some degree of a response from Future if he wants to hold this, because these vultures should be able to shove their way up. Might be able to take down a pylon. And they're going to have to walk across, yeah, this minefield. Now here's the, is he going to be able to do the mine trick to get the vultures through? Doesn't look like it. So might just want to back those off. So nice blockade, third base up. For future, not yet saturated, but theoretically has that economic lead. Another vulture, uh, no, sorry, another reaver in the shuttle, gonna make its way across, and the engineering bay floating mid map to try to get a good look at army out in the field. Mullet wants to use vul wants to use vulture pressure to try to sneak this third base, but 
with these true reavers out in the field, they are going to spot that command center floating down. And there's no, again, no siege tanks in the main. So dropping once again, starport plopping down. Two SCVs killed. Four SCVs killed. And starport and additional factory disrupted. This one's paying dividends. Might even be able to turn around and drop on those siege tanks. A continue good harassment, slowing 80's mullet down. And also getting critical information while that's happening. Observer out on the front door just to kind of get a good look at things. So 80's mullet, a little bit behind in the overall worker count, is behind overall in the supply count, putting things a little bit in Future's favor. Future's exactly where he wants to be. Another Reaver drop in the main. However, the shuttle getting taken out with the Reaver in it and Siege Tanks able to kill the Reaver on the ground. But I honestly feel like they did their job. Dragoon's starting to move out in large numbers. Level 1 weapons will be close to being done by the time he makes his way there. 80's Molt has a significant amount of Siege Tanks and Vultures, but needs to be in position to engage this army. Getting Charon Boosters to deal with and a Starport. Perhaps expecting Carriers as a follow-up. However, I don't see any carrier tech. It's just straight gateways at this stage. Engineering Bay. Spotting that Dragoon car army coming in. As a result, able to create a nice siege line and protect his 9 o'clock base, which is just starting to produce for him. But losing a couple vultures on the forward field. So right now, 80's mullet has the Goliaths to deal with potential arbiters, potential carriers. But as you can see, Future is still sticking to just gateway tech. And just now getting his Templar archives... Some Vulture sneaking across, they will, they will very quickly be taken out. Taking stock, 80's mullet about 10 workers down. Usually you want to have more than that at this stage. Still sitting on 4 factories. And 4 factories versus 7 gateways, and honestly, probably more to follow shortly. He can, he can try to keep pace here with Future, but not necessarily going to get ahead. These Vultures are going to be able to sneak up and see Future building his 4th base. Maybe see his fourth base. Yeah, finally sneaking in. Going to get the probe. I don't know if they're going to be able to disrupt much else. The Dragoon's pulling back to go ahead and take this out. Nice opportunity for Mullet to go ahead and try to plop some mines in midfield and take a bit of map control that way. Unfortunately, he does not have a lot of vultures, I think, mostly because he's been trying to produce siege tanks and a handful of Goliaths here, actually going up to three machine shops, going very siege tank heavy. I think scanning and seeing that Future is opting for Gateway Man. And doing what he needs to do to make Gateway Man work. And this is what Gateway Man produces. A lot of Dragoons. A slew of Dragoons. And a lot of Zealots. And yeah, Siege Tanks are what you want to respond to that. Level 2 weapons on the way for... Here's, here's the other thing about Future. Sometimes you'll see him do this kind of inverted thing where you can see him. He's got level 1 weapons level 1 weapons for Mullet comparatively, and he'll actually end up with an upgrade lead compared to his opponent. And this kind of, and that's one little difference I've seen. Oftentimes I feel like Protoss will skip weapons upgrade and they'll try to rely on Arbiters altogether. Future oftentimes I, I like that he stays on top of the upgrades when he's going Gateway Man to make sure that those units are more, are especially effective. Two Gateways being plopped down with an Arbiter Tribunal to get those Arbiters in place. Future with a significant supply lead. But he is going up against a lot of siege tanks. So if he whiffs the engagement point... Observer getting taken out right there. If he whiffs the engagement point, he might end up in a bad situation. However, economically he's ahead. And he can go ahead and sit back, wait till he hits max, and then start engagements. Mullet needs to get a move on. He's sitting on three bases. I think he's just waiting for level 2 weapons, level 1... Uh, timing, but he's way off that. Usually this is when you want to hit that moment. And he's just now starting to move there because of all the early game disruption. Zelt's engaging from that corner. The tank's not quite in position yet. Another attack squad of Zelt's and Dragoons coming from the right. I almost feel like I should zoom out here. First time I've done this in a commentary. To get a good look at everything. The Observer getting chased down. The siege tank line is a little bit too staggered back here. And this is a significant enough army that it should be able to wipe out. I'm wondering if there's like a command to get it to reset. 
back to, to base. A lot of Zults to lead the way. Clear those mines out. Future looking for an engagement point. He is also pumping Arbiters. Might want to wait for those Arbiters. As long as he keeps Mullet contained and away from a fourth base again. Should end up ahead in this match. About to hit max supply. Also has recall just about finished. Although I don't think he has any Arbiters up in the air with sufficient energy to really utilize this. Taking another base bottom right. Looks like he is opting for basically denying Mullet additional bases and playing Refugee Toss from here. Mullet wants to just sit back, try to play a defensive shell game, get his upgrades up get a 200-200 supply army and go from there. And getting into the late game army, Terran oftentimes will win that engagement simply be by having larger or stronger units. Not larger, just, you know, stronger units. Siege tanks with level 3 weapons. They melt armies. That's what they're good at. Future seeing the Dragoons sitting there at a potential 4th base. Starting to move up into it. Vulture's leading the way. We'll see if this provokes an attack from behind. Dragoon's scattering a little bit. Looks like they want to go ahead and back off. Not wanting to engage. Just wanting to delay. There is a science vessel there. To deal with the cloaking ability of that Arbiter. Some Zealots in position. Like, really, a good unit surround. Should there be an all-in engagement on Mullet's base. Future hitting 200 supply now. Mullet able to swing around with a significant factory count. What are we looking at here? Six, seven, eight. Eight factories. Starport. And another factory to come. Future in the meantime, yeah, sticking very heavily to Gateway Man. I don't I'm not even gonna bother count. You you can see. That's just that's a that's a bunch of gateways. He's gonna produce a bunch of gateway units. But again, this is my criticism of mid-game play for future. He's got one arbiter that's coming out. At what, what? What is this? 17 minute mark? Starting to push in on this. Upgrading level and weapon, so it looks like he might switch. Diving in, gets good stasis from that right hand corner. Unfortunately, the unit's coming in a bit piecemeal from the right, not joining the rest of that army. There is a, another piecemeal army coming from the right, but they're getting delayed on mines and turrets. So a little bit of a discoordinated attack here from Future. And as a result, loses a lot of his army. Went from 200 supply to 149, and 80's mullet is still sitting at around 180. However, Future, taking that upper left-hand corner, has that bottom right-hand corner mining, is sitting in a strong economic position. So Future can go ahead and bleed troops and lose these engagements as long as he keeps 80's mullet contained somewhere in the mid-game. Maybe gets a good recall off, something along those lines. However, at some point, once the upgrades kick in, he's going to have to deal with a 200-200 Terran army going straight down his throat. All sort I will get a good count here. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 gateways that I count. <laughs> a unit I can't even catch on screen exploding there. And get a good look at them. So the main is thin now for future. Natural expansion looks like it's about to mine out. He's sitting on 1, 2... Three, four bases. Bunch of cannons in the upper left. Setting up to do that kind of refugee toss style. Future's natural expansion is still running. His main is looking a bit thin. Nine o'clock base is fully running though. And he's got all sorts of siege tanks. Working towards level three, level two armor. Level two weapons is up for future. And again, yeah, this is where I feel like you want Psy Storm. You want more Arbiters in the air. I think Future might have the advantage just in... Or th I think 80's Molt might have the advantage just in unit composition. Because you really need good stasis. We do see a High Templar here, but it doesn't have a lot of energy. When I see Future lose games against Terran, this is usually where I see it. Because he just doesn't have a lot of the, the Spellcaster units in the mid-game to deal with this. Catching 80's Molt out of position, though, as he's trying to swing her in tor towards the main. Is there going to be an EMP? Looks like it's not quite... Not quite researched yet. Siege tanks now sieging up in that bottom right corner. Zealot's able to get on top of those siege tanks, peel a couple of them off, and it looks like a couple siege tanks down, and Future able to back off there at an even supply. Future sneaking right back up to 200. Still in these overall engagements, I feel like Future's going to be in a lot of trouble, particularly when this level 3 weapons and level 2 armor sneak in. Two siege tanks. Wow. Breaking across the line. Starting to work at that 12 o'clock as these probes are making their way across. Fortunately, looks like 80's mullet sieging a little bit too close. 
moving up, going to go ahead and take that 9 o'clock while he is more or less containing. Here's the thing. All the gateways are here. There are two Arbiters on the ground, but they're pushing in, creating a siege line to contain future. Zelt's getting peeled off. EMP hits one of the Arbiters, but not the second. It does not quite have enough energy for stasis. And the siege tank's barreling into that natural expansion. Reinforcements are going to have to swing back to free that up. Some vultures getting killed in that upper left-hand corner. Psystorm on top of stasis. And here's these back siege tanks, unfortunately, just now on sieging. Getting a lot of Dragoon kills as they're trying to deal with the mines, but it looks like Future's able to just pummel through this force on the front door. As it really wasn't fully grouped. There was a decent stasis and a good Psystorm on the front. But the Arbiter's leading with that Science Vessel taken out, and it looks like 80's standing army was just obliterated. Four Siege Tanks, very silent here on the front. So now Future sitting at, wow, 80's in trouble. 10 o'clock base is up, SCV wandering up to get annihilated, maybe a misrally there. And Future smelling blood in the water is going to start engaging across the 9 o'clock. Few Siege Tanks there, but again not sieged. A couple sieging from that back line. There are a couple Vultures right there. Some more units trying to cut the reinforcements across that midline. These are units that Future can afford to lose, though. It's going to try to sneak in and take some SEVs out from the corner while there aren't any science vessels in the air. But right now, if you take stock, Future at 174 supply. Mo a lot of that probably producing out of his gateways currently. But he basically has every expansion on the map that 80s doesn't. And 80s is basically sitting at the 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock base and nothing else. So if Future can keep getting decent exchanges, even if they're unfavorable, since he's mining at effectively five bases, as long as he's getting semi-decent exchanges in these engagements, he should end up winning the game overall. My feeling is still, though, to get those really good exchanges. He needs some Arbiters. He needs some... Casting that stasis. And he needs Psystorm somewhere out there. Vulture's starting to make their way to this upper left-hand base. Some siege tanks to follow. I don't see an army in position to engage this. It looks like rather than trying to defend that upper left-hand corner, he's going to go ahead and maybe go for a play on the main. Doesn't have quite enough energy for a recall. But does have a significant amount of troops making their way across. And there's, n yeah, not a lot of defense. This might force AD's mullet back. Turret's pushing that Arbiter back. Yeah, engaging there. Now you can see that on the minimap, the troops making their way back to try to defend this. Vulture's leading. A couple siege tanks grouped up there. Siege tanks diving into that natural expansion. If they can get on top of this factory line, that would be huge. Maybe even take a couple factories out. There are, unfortunately, reinforcements are coming out there. And with that level 3, level 2 armor now, might be enough. Some decent size storms on these reinforcements, but the Temple are getting exposed, so only able to get two size storms off before it was taken out. Reinforcements coming in piecemeal. Zealots doing some damage here in that natural, but there wasn't much there to speak of anyway. And not quite able to breach because of these siege tanks on the high ground. An empty side storm there, and more reinforcements making their way across. Should be able to take out the rest of this army. Some SUVs initially getting caught, but they are going to be able to sneak through the line. And you can just hear the death and destruction. This is a very scattered fight on both directions. This should get cleaned up, but in the interim, those siege tanks have been able to take out that upper left-hand base. So an overall win for 80s. He holds his main, takes out upper left, and might be able to just walk up and go ahead and take that expansion himself. He's got a lot of territory to cover, though, and a very immobile mech army. Upgrades are definitely in his favor. And he has a... Still a pretty decent army on the ground. I take that back. Recall in the main. Takes out the siege tanks. Will he be able to take out these factories? That's the key thing. You can get these recalls, but unless you're taking out factories and really making it count, it doesn't count for much. More reinforcements making their way back up. Both science vessels are down. The Arbiter <laughs> working on a couple units here and there. 
But Future not really doing any sort of concentrated attack, it looks like, on any of the, maybe back at home macroing. So I don't think he's going to get any of these factories down. So a bit of an empty recall. He's sitting at half the supply. Sorry, he's still sitting at double the supply of 80's mullet, though. So still in a very, very good position. Another star part making its way. The one thing that Future did manage to do, he managed to take out a lot of these turrets and the science vessels up in the air. But he only has a single Dragoon otherwise. Arbiter now making... Wow. While Mullet's out of position, Arbiter moving into the 10 o'clock position. It's going to dive in. Do it, And this is actually the big... This is the big hit right here. Disrupting a lot of mining and taking out a lot of SCVs. You can see the units on the minimap scrambling to try to get up here and defend this. But yeah, Mullet going to call GG because... Future's economy too strong, well behind in the overall supply count. A lot of SCVs getting obliterated, and he wouldn't be able to follow it up with just having his bank isn't large enough to, to keep it up. So game two goes to Future. It is 2-0 in the best of five. Future showing that despite being a little bit low in MRR, still has the ability to win both early game and mid and late game against 80's Mullet. We'll move on to game three momentarily. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.